So now let's take a look at the existing project that we currently have. We have a constructor that allows us to construct instances of the apple object with the color, weight, eat and throw methods. Now the problem is that the eat and throw methods are not unique. So they don't need to be on the instance level. They're just verbs. You can eat and throw any apple object. So what I would like to do now is put them into a prototype object because now we have three copies of the eat and throw methods unnecessarily when there could just be one copy of this subroutine in memory rather than three copies of each for each instance. And if we have more apples, there will be more copies of these subroutines wasting memory. So let's take a look at saving memory and making our application more manageable. So what we want to do now is take a look at our callable object or subroutine called apple. This is our constructor function that's building these objects. If you take a look at the window object and take a look at the callable apple object, you'll see that this constructor has a prototype property. It is in fact a callable object. Don't forget JavaScript treats functions as callable objects and you have a few properties that you can look at but mainly we want to take a look at the prototype property so what i want to do now is target that subroutine apple or callable object and use the member access operator to access the callable object and i want to access the prototype property and then i want to set it equal to a new prototype object any property or method is going to be shared across each instance that is generated from the Apple constructor. So what we have is the eat and the throw methods. I can now cut that out of the main Apple constructor functions execution context and paste it into the prototype. This means that I'm only going to have this one prototype object in memory and one copy of the eat and the throw methods that will be shared across all instances, all copies of the Apple object and we're saving memory. Now let's go ahead and save this and then go into the browser and take a look at Apple 1 and run the eat method, for example, Apple 2 and Apple 3. When we do this, you'll notice that each one runs the exact same subroutine. I can even then modify just one subroutine. Don't forget last time we were copying that subroutine or that method for each instance, but now I can target my constructor function I can target the prototype and I can actually change the eat method, for example, or I could add a new property or a new method onto the prototype so I can change it. And then when I run it again on either Apple one, two or three, you'll notice that they're all pointing to the same subroutine that's in the prototype object. Now I want to use the this context. This is a contextual word, it needs context. If I point to this, in that sentence, what am I pointing to? I need a context of what I'm pointing to, just like what is this, that memory pointer, pointing to. So, what I'm going to do is I'm gonna change the eat method. And I'm gonna change that to return whatever this is pointing to. Now, what I would like to do is refresh that in the browser, run it and target, let's say Apple two, and then I'm gonna run the eat method. Now, what's really important here is how is this method being invoked? This is so important to understand that this context. Is the this context pointing to the prototype object or is the this context going to be pointing to the Apple two object? Well, the answer is it's gonna be pointing to the Apple two object. And why is that? Because that's the object with the initial invocation. If you want to know what the this context is, you have to look at how that function was invoked. And it was invoked, meaning it was called up and told to run by the Apple II object. So what you see here with the this context is it goes back up the chain. That's really nice. And the reason why that's really nice is because now you know that when you use the this context, in the prototype object, it goes out to the instance level. So now I can change the color property, for example, or I could change another property or add a new property onto the instance level, the unique level, and change that object in particular, which is really nice. That means I can have one subroutine with the this context, and the this context will point to the instance level. So if I invoked it from Apple one, 
it would now that this context be Apple 1 and that this context for Apple 3 would be Apple 3. And so that allows me to go back up the chain and look at the initial object that invoked it and then I can change that object. And that's actually how very popular libraries work such as jQuery and other libraries. They use the prototype object and the this context and it allows you to go back up chain. So if you want to take a look at Apple 1, you have Apple 1 and then you have underscore underscore proto underscore underscore. Now the reason why you have that, that is the prototype object, but you're not supposed to modify that object directly through the instance level. You're not supposed to do that. You have to let the JavaScript JIT compiler actually link the object dynamically, which is what we're allowing it to do here. You should only be modifying prototype objects on the constructor functions themselves. You shouldn't be doing it through the instance level and you'll probably find that this name may change in different browsers. They really don't want you modifying the prototype object through this property. But it's here as a reference. It's here as a pointer, if you will, a link, as in a prototype chain and a chain is made up of links. So we've got links of objects. So we've got our prototype object that we attach to the Apple constructor that's being dynamically linked to. And then also we have another prototype object that again is being dynamically linked to and you have a couple of methods and properties that you can actually access here. So this is actually something that's very unique. You can call a symbol name, for example, we have eat and throw and it will look down the chain and as soon as it finds that symbol name, it will stop and it will invoke that value or it will return that value. Now, finally, what you have in this prototype chain is again, it stops at the symbol name. So let's say I modify just Apple one and I'm modifying it on the instance level, on the copy level, actual Apple one I'm gonna modify and I'm going to create the eat property. So now we have the eat symbol and it's pointing to, it's referencing, it's symbolizing this string in memory. Now what happens when I try to invoke the eat method? Well, that's gonna be a little bit of a problem because what's gonna happen is it's gonna look for the eat symbol and as soon as it finds the eat symbol, it stops. Now, just for Apple one, I've created the eat property. And if I try to invoke a property, you're going to get an error and say, sorry, it's not a callable object. So actually what you're finding is here, as soon as it finds the symbol name in that chain of objects, it stops right there. So now we have a block here because on the instance level, we've got an eat symbol, but in the prototype, we've also got the eat symbol as well. Now it doesn't erase that symbol because if I go to Apple two and call the eat method, it looks for that eat symbol name and it will invoke it because it is on the prototype, so it'll stop on the prototype. But if it's on the instance level, it will stop on the instance level. So it's as soon as it finds that symbol name, it stops and either returns that value or executes that value, that callable object. So be very careful about your naming and your symbol name so that you don't have symbol name collisions here. You have a collision with Apple one, but not with Apple two and Apple three. Apple one has an eat symbol on it. And also the prototype has an eat symbol on it. And so there is a collision between there. And it may not produce the results that you're expecting when you start running your application. So that's it. Prototypes are just shared objects. They allow you to share properties and methods across a range of objects. The prototype object is attached to the callable object, the callable object that is the constructor. And when you construct an object from that constructor, it is automatically linked to that callable object's prototype object. And that's it. That link is dynamically established and that's it. I just have to have one copy and then I can use the this context to go back out to the instance level to go to either Apple one, Apple two or Apple three. And I can change those particular objects uniqueness. So hopefully that's taught you a little bit more about prototypes.